Hey guys, welcome back to another Excel video and today we are learning how to create dynamic drop-down lists by extracting a sorted list of unique values from an unsorted data that also contain duplicates. Let's get started. All right, before we jump into the techniques we are learning today in this video, let's understand what the problem is. Now the requirement is pretty simple. What I want is a list of customers containing names. And if you know how to use data validation, it's quite an easy thing. What I can do is go to data tab, press data validation, from here select list. And in the source I can provide this range that contains the names of the customers, press OK. And this should have the names of the customers. Though it does have the name of the customers, but as the source has the repetitions, it has duplicates, and also the names are not in alphabetical order. The same is being reproduced in the drop down list. This is definitely that I want to avoid, but there are two additional requirements, as I said in the beginning of the video. One, I want the drop down list to be sorted. That means it should be in an alphabetical order. It's much easier for the user to make the input in the Excel worksheet. Otherwise, you have to hunt for the name and it's quite frustrating. A second requirement is that drop down list should update itself dynamically if a new customer is added in this range. Now that we have understood the problem, let's continue with our techniques. The first method uses one of the oldest available tools in the history of Excel, and that is the pivot tables. So having an active cell inside the range, press Ctrl A to select it completely, and then hit Ctrl T on the keyboard. Make sure my table has headers is checked, press OK. And this will convert your simple data range into a table range. Once that is done, having the table still selected, press insert tab and then click pivot tables. This dialog box is basically asking if, if I want to have a pivot table inserted in a new worksheet or an existing one. Click existing, provide it with a specific cell like this, press OK and now I'm ready to make my pivot table. Remember, my requirement is limited only to customer names. So drag the customer field by using left mouse button into the rows quadrant, release the left mouse button and you immediately have a unique list of names of the customers in the pivot table. Now, slight modification to the pivot table itself. By having the pivot table selected, go to the design tab and then grand totals and then click off for rows and columns. Now that we have a unique list of names, we need to find a way to somehow plug this data into a drop down list. And one of the functions that we can use is an offset function. Now, what is offset function and how it works? I have a detailed article written on it. I will provide a link to it in the description. Please do check it out. And you can always come back and watch this video again to better understand how offset function is working in this situation. But very quickly, offset function is simply a lookup function. And just like other lookup functions, it is going to fetch us a specific value or specific set of values which we technically term as an array and this is exactly what we are doing in this situation we want offset function to fetch us an array that is the names of the customers that are in this list so starting with the reference which is basically a starting point from which offset function should start fetching the values or the data so this is going to be the first name in the list press F4 to lock it down. Do I need to skip any rows? No, because I am starting from the same row where I have the first name itself. So zero for that. Columns, no for that as well. Now height. Height argument is simply asking how many rows of data it should fetch. Now I have four names contained within four rows. So I will put in four in this place. Close parentheses. Now, instead of pressing enter, I will use a workaround to confirm if this formula is working correctly. The reason is this formula is fetching multiple values and it will not be able to house it inside one cell. 
and it will throw a value error. So in order to avoid this and still to confirm, I can select this formula completely and then press F9 on the keyboard and you can see that it is fetching all the four names as intended. Press Ctrl Z to go back into the formula, copy this formula, press escape, select the cell where you want to have the drop down list, go to the data tab, click data validation, from here select list and in the source input bar paste the formula definitely starting with an equal sign and press OK. And there you have a complete list of four names of customers appearing in a drop down fashion. All right, now let's see what happens if I add another customer in this Excel table. So my new customer goes by the name Gucci and just with the dummy data quickly, I have the data inserted like this. Now, although I have a new name inside the Excel table, it's not appearing in the pivot table. To get it, I simply need to refresh the pivot table by going to Analyze tab and clicking Refresh once. And this will immediately fetch the latest information from this table. Now, the list is not sorted, and to correct it, click the drop down arrow once and then sort A to Z, and this will immediately sort the list for us. Once that is done, let's have a quick look at the drop down list and see what is happening over there. And there you go. Although we have the name of the new customer, it is only fetching the first four names in this list. And the reason for that, remember, let me paste the formula once again for better understanding. We had a hard figure of four inside the function. That means we asked the offset function to fetch just the four rows. And even after having a new name that has expanded the list to five rows, it is only fetching the first four rows and thus only first four names in the dropdown. Now, in order to let Excel automatically assess how many rows of data should be fetched, I'm going to use another Excel function that goes by the name count A. Now, the purpose of count A function is that it counts the number of cells that are not empty. Now, coming back to my pivot table, the names of the customer are always going to stay inside the column P. So even if I add new customers here, it is going to populate downwards in this fashion. So I can select the entire column P like this, lock it down, and with the help of count A function, I will be able to count how many rows are not empty in this column. Now remember, only those rows are not going to be empty that either contain a name or header of the pivot table. Now definitely, I don't want the header of the pivot table to disturb my list of name. I will reduce the count by one, like so, and then close parentheses. And once again, I will not press enter and use a workaround by selecting the whole formula and then hitting press F9. And now you can see that it is fetching all the five names of the customers. Press Ctrl Z, copy this formula, like so, press escape, going back to the cell where I want the drop down list, data tab, data validation, and replace this formula with the new one, press OK, and now I have all the names of the customers showing up correctly. Once again, checking with another customer added to the list. Refresh the pivot table. And there you have the new customer added in the drop down list dynamically and also in alphabetical order. So, this is how you can use Pivot Table to get a sorted list of unique data and then plug that data into a drop down list using an offset function. The second method in this video uses Power Query, which is a relatively newer tool in Excel. 
So once again, I have a similar data that I used back in the pivot table method. So having an active cell inside the range, press control A to select the range and then hit control T again. And then make sure my table as headers is checked, press OK. This will convert the range to a table range. Once that is done, go to the data tab and from here click from table or range button. And this will invoke Power Query interface in which we will have the whole table imported for us. Now remember my requirement is only limited to the names of the customers. The other three columns in this table are redundant or unwanted. So let's remove them by selecting the first one and then pressing and holding the shift key on the keyboard and left mouse button clicked on the header of the last column again. This will select all the three columns hit remove button and it will get rid of the unwanted columns. Now let's process the customer column. Right click on the header, click remove duplicates to get rid of the repetitive data. And in order to sort this column, click the drop down arrow, click sort ascending, and this will have the table sorted for us. Once that is done, click close and load and it will load the output in a new worksheet in a tabular form. Now, as the output is in tabular format, I cannot use it in data validation. So I have to wrap it inside a named range. In order to do it, select the names itself, go to the formulas tab, click define name, and here, give it a unique name, let's say cust underscore table, and I already have the correct reference mentioned in the refers to input field. Press OK. Once that is done, go back to the worksheet where you want the drop down list to appear. Select the cell, go to the data tab, click data validation. From here, select list. Having the cursor inside the source input bar, hit F3 on the keyboard to invoke the paste name dialog box. And from here, select the named range we have just defined, which is cust underscore table, press OK. OK, once again, and now you have the names of the customers appearing in the drop down list. And once again, let's see what happens if I add a new customer to the table. And here again, I am using the same customer Gucci. And just let's just quickly enter the dummy data like this. Now I have a new customer added. In order to refresh this table, have it selected, go to the Query tab, click Refresh once so that it imports the latest information. Once that is done, heading back to the drop-down list, you will see that all the names are appearing in the drop-down list. So this is yet another way to make a dynamic drop-down list based on an unsorted data that also contain duplicates. Moving on to the third method that uses one of the latest feature available to us in Microsoft Excel, and that is dynamic arrays. Now, sadly, this feature is not available to general public as yet, but hopefully it will be available to everyone in the near future. So let's see how dynamic arrays has changed the whole process for us and by having new functions available with dynamic arrays functionality has made it really simple to get a dynamic drop-down list from the data like this. So let's go ahead with the data. Again, this is the same data that we used in the first two examples, having an active cell inside the range. Hit Control A to select the range, then hit Control T to convert it into a table range. Make sure my table has headers is checked, press OK. Now that the simple data is converted into a table range, let's go ahead with the first requirement and that is to extract a unique list of names out of this column. And for that, I'm going to use a newest function available with the dynamic race with the name unique. And what it does is that I can simply provide it with the data range that has the duplicates, close parenthesis, 
and watch very closely. When I am going to press enter, it is going to give me the complete list of names. Without restricting the output into a single cell, it has more like spilled over to the following cells to accommodate the whole array of unique values. Now this spill behavior is new and comes packaged with dynamic arrays functionality. All right, now that we have the names, I can see it's not sorted. And guess what? In order to have a sorted list of names, I can simply use another dynamic arrays function that goes by the same name and that is sort. I simply have to wrap the unique function inside the sort function, close parentheses, press enter, and now I have a sorted list of unique names. How simple is that? All right, so now that I have the list of names, let's see how can I plug this data into a dropdown list. Having the cell selected where I want the dropdown, go to the data tab, click data validation, and from here select list. And here, a small change. Instead of selecting the whole range, I'm only going to refer to the first cell in this array. And once I have the first cell referenced, like so, I'm going to simply add a hash sign or a pound sign after that. Press OK. And the data validation is going to take care of the rest of the process for me. And here we have all the four names in the drop down list. Now let's see what happens if I add a new customer in the list. Again, Gucci is going to be our guest. Like so. Now you can see that I don't have to press any refresh button. The dynamic array is automatically refreshing itself. And like so, the drop down list is automatically fetching the new list of names for me that is also sorted. So this is probably the best of the three methods we have discussed today. And there you have it. From using the oldest tool available to us in the Excel to the newest one, we have learned three different techniques to get a sorted list of unique data out of an unsorted data that also has duplicates. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If it really is the case, please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and push the notification bell icon to stay in the loop. Until next video, I'm your host Hassan Fuzzle, signing out and happy excelling.